detectives and welcome to my July book recommendations. Now because it's the summer holidays I've decided to do something slightly different for this month. I'm not going to tell you about five books that I've read recently. I'm going to tell you about five books that I remember loving in my own summer holidays. These are five books that absolutely engrossed me and captivated me that I spent days reading and thinking about and rereading again and again. I know that's something a lot of you do and I think that even though these books are classics they are books that you will still love and you will feel the same complete obsession with that I did when I was your age. But before we get to that I have a quick announcement and a very exciting one and that is that even though it's not published until next month we have just gotten in the final finished copies of the Guggenheim mystery. The Guggenheim Mystery, of course, is the first book I've written and published that is not a Hazel and Daisy mystery. It is a sequel to Siobhan Dowd's The London Eye Mystery, and it is about Ted Spark and his family who go on a holiday to New York and get tangled up in an art heist. A painting is stolen from the Guggenheim Museum in New York, and Ted and his cousin and his sister have to get the painting back and work out who really committed the crime before Ted's Aunt Gloria is implicated in the crime. You will love this book if you love my books and if you love Siobhan's book, The London Eye Mystery. I am so excited about this and it is coming out on the 3rd of August, so not long to wait now. And if you're very lucky, you may find that some stores have it a little bit early, so go on the hunt. And if you do see it, please let me know. I am so excited about it finally getting out into the world. So, as promised, these are five books that I absolutely loved when I was your age, that obsessed me and excited me. And the first book I've chosen is one that I just keep talking about. It's, I think, my very favourite children's book ever, and it is Charmed Life by Diana Wynne-Jones. Now, Diana Wynne-Jones writes about magic and wizards and witches and other worlds, but she does it in a way that seems like every single one of the people in her stories is real, and you could meet them and talk to them and be friends with them. Cat in this book, was somebody who I I just longed to be friends with. I loved him. I thought he was the most fantastic hero of the story because he's a little bit shy. He's a little bit awkward. He doesn't really know what he's doing with his life, which felt like me when I was his age and probably feels like a lot of people now. Kat and his sister Gwendolyn are orphaned and they are sent to this fantastic place called Crestomancy Castle that is run by this wonderful man called Crestomancy. He is an enchanter. He's a magician. And he drags Kat and Gwendolyn into this whole world of magic and excitement. It is the beginning of what is really a quartet of books by Diana Wynne Jones. So if you like this, there are loads more about Crestomancy. This is one of the books that J.K. Rowling talks about as one of her big influences, and it's one of my big influences as well. This book is for exactly the same age group as mine. It's eight and up. Anyone older than eight can read this. I would recommend you read it even if you're an adult, because they're absolutely fantastic books. The next book is quite different. It is not magic. It is not different worlds. It is very much our world, and it is The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot. This book is about Mia, who is an ordinary, awkward teen in New York, who kind of hates her school, who kind of hates her life, until one day Mia discovers that her father is a prince, and that means that she is a princess, and she suddenly has to go from being a very ordinary girl to being in the international spotlight, being always watched, being always monitored, and having to take on a lot more responsibility. These books are absolutely hilarious. They were written in the 90s, they were first published when I was your age, and I think they stand up really well to reading in 2017, even though Mia doesn't have a lot of the technological stuff that we have today. It's still really, really funny, and it's a brilliant look at being a teenager and kind of hating your life and kind of having to deal with it. I love Megabot. I love The Princess Diaries, I love Mia, and I think you will too. This is for about 10 plus readers, I'd say. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Secret of Platform 13 by Eva Ibbotson. This book is about magic, mystery, excitement, ghouls and ghosts and magical creatures, and it's about train stations in London. So I completely adore it. It is the story of a little prince who was kidnapped from his magical land and taken to London by mistake. Now, the creatures in the magical land can only get through to London and get him back once every few years, and they only have a short window of time to do it, and this is the story of their quest to save the prince and save their country. It's really funny. It's really lovely. It is a magical, exciting adventure for anyone older than eight. The next book I'm going to talk about is for slightly older readers, and it is I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Now, you may know that Dodie Smith wrote a book called The 101 Dalmatians. If you don't know, 
That is who wrote The 101 Dalmatians. But she also wrote books for older readers and this is I think her best and this is my favourite. It is the story of Cassandra Mortmain who is stuck in this awful crumbling old castle in the country with her family who are all completely bonkers and eccentric in various different ways. They are desperately poor and they are desperate for a way out and one day two very handsome young men turn up and they're extremely rich and they throw the whole of Cassandra's life into complete turmoil. It is just a story about a girl growing up and falling in love for the first time but it's so beautifully done. I genuinely feel like Cassandra could be my friend. I feel like this could be my life even though it's written about the 1930s. It feels so real, so wonderful and every single character in it is just absolutely brilliantly written. I think if you are older than about 13 or 14 you will fall for this book so hard and it will become a really special book to you as it is to me. And finally my Agatha Christie pick for this month. I couldn't go a month without choosing Agatha Christie. She was one of the writers who entertained me during my summer holidays. I read all of her books again and again and again. She has more than 70 books so I was at it for a long time. This one which is Evil Under the Sun is one of my favourites and of course it is very summery. It is a horrific cover. I am a bit obsessed with these covers. They are so incredibly ugly and awful. They are all from the 1970s and they were all designed by a guy called Tom Adams. This story is basically the story of a summer holiday that goes horrendously wrong and Hercule Poirot who is there at the hotel has to work out which one of the hotel's guests committed the murder. It's a really clever one. It's got a really good twist at the end. It is I think one of my favourites. I keep saying this, almost all of Agatha Christie is my favourite Agatha Christie but this one I think has a really nice summery feel. It's really frightening and really exciting and really clever. So this is a book that means a lot to me. I have a lot of memories of it as a child and again I think you're gonna love it if you love Agatha Christie, if you love my books. If you're 12 and up I think you'll really really like this book. That is it from me this month. But I do have a lot of exciting things coming up in August. I'll be doing a series of bookshop signings during August to celebrate the Guggenheim Mysteries release. In June we ran a poll to see which city you would like me to visit most and the three winning cities have now been announced on my newsletter and they are London and Bath and Manchester. And that means that I'll be visiting London and Bath and Manchester to meet you and sign your books and talk to you about the Guggenheim mystery and about the Murder Most and Ladylike Mysteries too if you would like. I will also be visiting other cities so don't worry if you don't live in one of those three that I just told you about. There are going to be more chances to meet me and if you can't meet me this summer don't worry I really will be touring a lot this autumn you will have so many chances to see me and chat to me. So I really hope you're having a great summer. I've got so much exciting stuff coming up. I can't wait for it to happen. I can't wait for the Guggenheim to be released. And I hopefully will see you in August. Bye-bye.